take two. Hello, Carrie Caldwell from the Zia Cooking Show. Good morning, happy day. Absolutely. So here we are, it's what, our 14th show? I can't believe it, it is incredible. What a journey we've had. <laughs> no kidding. Hey, uh, I, I, well, let's talk about this journey real quick. Because uh, in all the shows you get, we get a lot of, or you get a lot of questions and sometimes we can't answer them right away because it's a long, long story behind every, uh, every one of these answers. But what actually brought you to make a cooking show? I know you've been very active on the New Mexico Recipe Show, right? Is that yes, what it's called? Right. They got a lot of followers there, what, 240,000 or About something? 260,000 Unbelievable. have yeah. joined a Facebook group. And um, I believe it was like in 2019, I was invited by a friend to um, take a look at this website. I'm sorry, this Facebook group. And I absolutely just fell in love with the camaraderie, the sharing, the niceness. There's one thing about food is it's so personal, it's historic, it lets us share who we are, it lets us share our tips and our techniques. So evolving in this group on New Mexico Recipes on Facebook, um, I really got excited with a lot of the feedback that I got. And the administrators... You uh, post a lot on there. I do. I fact, mean, you, it's like, if it's the, <laughs> it's the NFL, if it is this, the birthday, if it's a, uh, whatever, yeah. you have a recipe for every, every uh, occasion on there. I, I do, and I love that group. In fact, people have invited me to join other Facebook groups, and I've been you know, asked to do other things. But New Mexico Recipes, um, it has my heart. You'll find the only place that you'll find on Facebook that I post recipes, and I post three to five, sometimes even more. Um, but like you said, it's a place that we welcome uh, people to share their techniques, their family history, and that group is amazing. Food is just something that's like a great way to just share a little bit about who you are, and it's a, it's a topic that people can get so passionate about too. But if you take, for instance, if you take, I, I think cooking is like, it's an art, isn't it? Some, somewhat is an art. So if you take, for instance, out of the whole spectrum of art, let's say uh, music, uh, painting, whatever it may be, people want an outcome. In other words, there's some symbol which way they want to transfer to the, to the public. What do you want to transfer in this process? In, my, in other words, you are very, very engaged in all of this and it takes a lot of time it's not like you put stuff together right. for a recipe it really takes time and no matter if you feed your family or not it still takes time but what do you want philosophically to be the outcome for those who uh, see you watch you uh, uh, and uh, remember hopefully the recipe well i think my most important goal is to show people that they don't have to be afraid in the kitchen sometimes we get real nervous especially if we don't have a written recipe. And some people are very precise. They want a three-quarter cup, or they want um, the exact measurements, or the exact brand of the item that I use. But I want to create an ability for people to find courage, to get a little bit of uh, creativity, to go back in their memory box and their files of what their mom, or maybe their grandmother, or their aunt made while they were growing up, and let us know that it is um, trial by fire. And it really is, because we're actually working over, you know, a, a hot stove or in the oven. And is it that also, like, for instance, for a lot of people, certain tastes we associate with certain situations in our life, right. isn't it? With it's a remembrance, or just the smell, what comes out of the oven reminds us of a certain moment in life. Yes. Isn't that right? Yes. I mean, you always talk about your grandma, for instance. Uh, so tell us a little bit uh, more, if you, if you like. Great. Um, I was raised by incredibly strong women. women. Um, my mom was very young when she had me, and so my grandmother, um, especially in, in the very first part of my life, um, was real um, a, a big caretaker, or, you know, a second parent, um, you know, so to speak. But um, there was one thing that I always had was um, growing up, she had the world's smallest kitchen, and she was a mother of nine children. So to be able to work with her, I had a stool right by her. I started to um, make tortillas probably when I was two or three years old. Some of my earliest memories, actually, Manfred, are where I'm cleaning beans or having a cup of coffee with her in the morning. And she was a very um, wonderful human being. In fact, 
She's the only pe person I know in the world that I have never heard her say a bad thing about anyone. And that is a true queen in my book. But she was very resourceful. She grew up on a farm. Um, and a farm girl knows how to make ends meet. They and food does, is not prejudice, is it? Yes. I mean, it's not the prejudice item. Not exactly, at all. Exactly. Exactly. And so, um, you know, growing up with her, um, I got very comfortable in the kitchen. In fact... Um, I'm a bossy girl. I've always been born bossing people around, and she really let my wings um, spread. She would um, give me the opportunity to go in the kitchen and ask me, what are we going to have for dinner today, Miha, or what are we going to be preparing? And she really gave me the confidence to stand in front of the stove and to cook and to also use a variety of different items that we find in everybody's kitchen and be able to put them together in a different way to create delicious meals. Do you believe that uh, in the, uh, let me call it Hispanic culture, mm -hmm. because we're cooking mostly Hispanic food, uh, that it is very much attached to a female role, or do you think it has changed at all also to the male? Well, I do believe that in every family you, you'll find a different um, mix, and, and culturally you're right. You'll find a lot of the ladies that are you know gathering together because in the kitchen is also a big psychological boost for a lady. It's how you share with each other. It's how you solve problems, whether it's you know family life or work life or just sharing a variety of things that go on. So to me, it's a real big comfort zone. But um, I have two sons, and I raised them when they were very young to never be afraid of a spatula, to be able to go in and create good meals for themselves as well. And then, um, of course, you'll find that you'll always have an uncle um, or I hope that some people are as blessed as I do, that will have some that will teach you different tips like cooking and grilling steaks or growing vegetables. So, but I, but I um, think that in a Hispanic family, or at least the family that I was born in and the region that I live in, uh, we really count on each other as a group, especially when it comes to preparing meals and, and cooking. Some of us are a lot better than others. I know there's a few so, guys so in my are you, so are you, are you anything they made. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think it is also uh, is part of a sociological uh, labyrinth of humankind, this being together, partaking together, uh, you know, not yes. specifically in a gender role, but it could be, and there's nothing sure. wrong with it. Sure. Uh, but when you say that the women shared in the kitchen right. uh, problems among themselves, do you think it has a, a sociological character as well in this whole? I, I absolutely do. And, and, you know, I've studied neuroscience for years and years. And so we talk about the smell. Our olfactory region of our brain, it evokes memories and excitement, you know. Yeah. And so when we smell things that are cooking or we have um, the ability to remember, we eat with our eyes too. So you see something that's really attractive and you just want to jump into it. You know, so I do believe it, it feeds your stomach, it feeds your heart, your mind. I definitely agree with that. So to sum it all up, <laughs> Carrie, cooking is important in life, isn't it? It is extremely important. I think that when you remove the fear out of anything, when you're always trying something new, it's normal to be nervous and it's okay to make a mistake along the way. But when you take pride in what you do in any walk of life, but mainly in the kitchen, taking small steps, getting better, fusing things together, um, for me, one of the kindest um, or most loving things I can do is prepare a meal for someone. To give it to them on a plate, to look in their eyes and just wait for them to close it and to just feel all the food, just feed their soul, their mind, their belly. It's really important that I do that for my family, for my friends, and then I get to try to pass this on through my YouTube channel. And I hope that you feel that I do cook from my heart and that everybody who joins me in my kitchen knows that it's sincere, it's honest, it's, a, it's never perfect. I've never met anybody that is the expert of any taco. The taco that is the best taco is the taco you like the best. It's the one maybe you learned how to make when you were young. Um, it's one you learned to experiment. But I think it's important that we keep on working in the kitchen. Carrie, this gives us a nice insight. And uh, we you. really appreciate your honesty about this cooking show, which we believe is a little different than, than other cooking shows. Right. Because you really put your heart in all of this. Uh, why don't we start cooking on the next cooking show, Carrie? That sounds wonderful. Let's